before the Mass. Prepare yourselves well for it. Do not watch it with a cup of coffee in hand. Read the Mass readings to prepare yourselves. Think what you are to thank the Lord for and what to offer to Him this Mass. Remember, you are praying this Eucharist with many other fellow Catholics. During the Mass Stay in reverent gesture throughout the Mass. Pray with the whole family. Join in prayers, response, and singing. At the time of communion, make a spiritual communion. After the Mass, take some moments of silence to read again the scriptural readings and reflect. Welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is January 24, 2021, and we are on the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, we also observe National Bible Sunday. Our presider is our chaplain, Reverend Father June Sescon. Please stand and let us sing the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Jesus, the Word made flesh, be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear sisters and brothers, as we gather for the holy sacrifice of the Mass on this third Sunday in Ordinary Time. We also observe National Bible Sunday, the Sunday of the Word of God. We are reminded of the power, the beauty, the importance of the Word of God. Let us open our hearts because at every Mass, the Word of God is given to us. Let us pray that our encounter with the Word of God, with Jesus, the Word made flesh, be fruitful and grace-filled. 
to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins. For the times we have turned a deaf ear to your invitation to follow you more closely and to live as you have taught us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have failed to be good news to our neighbors and friends, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times we have failed to contribute to the building of a better world because of our attachment to material interests, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May our loving God have mercy on us, grant us healing and peace, teach us to forgive one another, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the same in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen to the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil ways, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. and your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. 
Teach me your ways, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now honor the Holy Gospel. <laughs> Together, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, dear sisters and brothers, and once again, welcome to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this third Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we also, as I mentioned in the introduction, we observe National Bible Sunday. In fact, this is a civic observance, our government some decades back, declared actually January as National Bible Month. And this is not just a Catholic observance, but even other Christians, our other brethren, the Protestants, and those who profess belief in Christ, we hold this. And I don't know if there is any other country in the world that celebrates something like this. So much so that Pope Francis, two years ago, he decreed that the third Sunday in ordinary time will be called Sunday of the Word of God. But even before Pope Francis declared that, we in the Philippines, we are already observing this devotion to the Bible every month of January. So do you see, there is a convergence. And hopefully, that would give us an impetus to really appreciate the Word of God, especially as contained in sacred scriptures. Once a year, we are reminded 
The Word of God is important, especially the Bible. Hindi na ako magpapataas ng kamay, pero ngayong National Bible Sunday, Sunday of the Word of God, meron ba tayong Bible? No? Lahat ba ang mga Katoliko? Sana po, bawat Katoliko may Bible. It is sad, and we confess with humility and even shame that at times, the Word of God is associated, identified more with others rather than with us. Na, di ba, minsan, pag may nakatabi kayo sa jeep, sa bus, sa MRT, masabi mo, sino yung katoliko? Ah, siya yung pagdumukot, may dalang nagro-rosaryo, nakasot ng scapular, no? may dalang nobenaryo ng sacred heart at perpetual help. Yan ang katoliko. Pero aminin natin, pag may nakatabi kayo, tas may dalang Bible, lalo na yung medyo ano na, sira, ano na yung mga pages, minsan nang nasa isip natin, ang sasabihin ni ba, ano kayang sekta to? No? Born again kaya to? Pastor ba to? Aminin natin, hindi natin agad naisip na katoliko kaya siya. Nakakalungkot that the Word of God is even identified more. That's why, let us reclaim that. Let us understand that as Catholics, we should also have a devotion to the Word of God, especially the Bible. Kaya, yung tanong ko kanina, sino yung may Bible? Sana nga ho, lahat tayo may Bible. Maging resolution natin. Pero hindi lang yon. Mamaya ho, pag uwi ninyo, kunin nyo ho yung Bible nyo. Hipan nyo, baka maalikabok na ho. Kasi nga ho, baka naman meron nga tayong Bible, pero yun, nisa nasa altar, nakabuklat, parang naging display lang. O, no, minsan yung mga kinakasal ko, may Bible sila. Ko, dadalawin ko kayo, titignan ko yung Bible na yan. Baka nag-silver jubilee na kayo sa kasal, parang bagong-bago pa rin yung Bible. Baka hindi pa nabubuklat. Kaya sana hindi lang magkaroon ng Bible, sana rin basahin ang Bible. Figuro sabi na iba sa inyo, eh Father, masyado ng old passion yan. No? Ngayon, telepono na ngayon, cellphone na ngayon, smartphone na ngayon, iPhone na ngayon, tablet na iPad. O, magandang tanungin din po. Sa dinami-dami ng apps niya nandyan sa telepono nyo, sa tablet ninyo. Meron kayang application dyan about the Word of God, the Bible? Meron pong libreng mga application na download nyo lang para pag natatraffic tayo o may nagaantay ka, you can read the Word of God. O napunta ka sa isang simbahan, wala kang dalang iba, dala mo lang, syempre, si cellphone mo, you could read the Word of God. Baka naman... Panay mga TikTok lang yung apps mo dyan, no? At the games, no? Panay ML lang yung games mo. Wala yung Word of God. Sana meron, no? Naalala ko tuloy, meron pong kwento ng maglolo. No? Dasi nga, napag-uusapan yung high-tech, no? Isang araw, sabi ng lolo, nasa sala siya, tinawag niya apo niya. Sabi niya, Noy, dalin mo nga yung dyaryo dito. Sabi nung apo niya, lolo naman, masyado kang old-fashioned. Nasa tablet na. Ang balita ngayon. Wala nang jaryo-jaryo. Sabi ng lolo niya, hindi. Gusto ko yung jaryo. Pero mapilit yung apo. Sabi niya, hindi lo. Ito, tablet na lang. Di kinuha ni lolo yung tablet. No? Hinampas yung mesa doon, nung tablet. Nabasag tuloy. Napaiyak yung apo. Sabi niya, lolo, anong ginawa mo? Bakit mo hinampas yung tablet? Eh sabi ko, kanina ka pa hinihingi sa iyo yung jaryo. May langaw eh. Ahampasin ko lang yung langaw ng jaryo. Tablet ka ng tablet eh. Ayan. Buti na lang ako naka-face mask kayo. Hindi ko alam kung sino yung tumawa. No? Ayan. No? Yung tumawa ho, mataas ang IQ. No? Nag-gets ang joke. But seriously, let us this Sunday remember how important the Word of God is. How valuable the Word of God is. Why? Two things. Very simple lessons this Sunday. Why is the Word of God important? Why do we have to love the Word of God? First, the Word of God calls us. And secondly, the Word of God converts us. That 
is the power of the Word of God. First, the Word of God calls us. Pag binabasa ro pala natin ng Bible, ito'y nangungusap ang Diyos sa atin. Do you believe that God calls you every day? Do you believe that God wants to talk to you every day? Whether you like it or not, whether you're aware of it or not, God calls you every day. That is why it is very important that if we have a devotion to the Word of God, we could easily hear the Word of God, the call of God. That's why in the first reading, we heard Jonah. In fact, it was a call not only for the Ninevites, but it was also a call for Jonah, who in the beginning was stubborn. God was calling him. God was even calling, using the Ninevites to call Jonah. And God is using Jonah to call the Ninevites. Ganun daw po ang Diyos natin. Gustong gusto tayong kausapin. Gustong gusto tayong tawagan. Pero ang tanong, naririnig ba natin siya? We pray for that grace. That's why in the gospel we heard Jesus went to Simon and Andrew, James and John to call them. During that time, the, the usual practice was disciples go to the rabbis. They are the ones who go to the rabbis and say, I want to follow you. I want to learn. But notice, in the case of Jesus, it is different. It was Jesus who went to them. It was Jesus who called them. That's why later on in the gospel, Jesus would say, You did not choose me. I chose you. I called you. Let's pray for that grace. Gustong gusto tayong kausapin ng Diyos. Pero lumilipas ang araw, hindi natin naririnig ang tawag ng Diyos. Kaya maganda palang magbasa ng Bible. Nag, nakikinig tayo sa misa, nagninilay tayo sa salita ng Diyos para maging handa tayo pag tinawag tayo ng Diyos. Kasi may gustong sabihin sa'yo ngayon si Lord, lalo na ngayong pandemic, may gustong sabihin sa'yo, narinig mo na kaya? Perhaps you need to open that Bible so that you may be surprised by reading that Bible, you would hear the call of God because the Word of God calls. The second, the Word of God converts. How do you know if you really heard the Word of God? How will we know if the Word of God is really in our midst? Pag naalala mo lang ba, oh, mamaya pag kumain ka, ano ba yung first reading? Ay, si Jonah. Ay, yung gospel, yung si Peter. No. Not only because you remembered what was proclaimed. Not only because you memorized Bible verses. You really heard the Word of God if it converts you, it transformed you, it changed you. Yun daw po ang sukatan kung talagang narinig natin ang salita ng Diyos, binago tayo ng salita ng Diyos. That's why in the first reading, the Ninevites, when they heard Jonah, they changed their ways. They repented. In the gospel, when James and John, Peter and Andrew heard Jesus calling them, they left their nets and followed the Lord. Iniwan nga nila, pati tatay nila. Their lives were changed. They got converted. Sisters and brothers, that is the power of the Word of God. It converts us. Because that is what Jesus meant when He said the very first words in the Gospel of Mark. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Ano ra pala yung good news? Di ba? Pag sinabi sa'yo ng kaibigan mo, o may tinag sa'yo, may good news ako sa'yo. 
How do you um, how do you define good news? Pleasant news, nice news, news that makes me feel good. In the Bible, that is not the meaning of good news. The Greek word for good news is euangelion. And that means it is the type of news that radically changes your lives. Good news changes your life, transforms your life. Kaya nga nakita, balik tayo sa Greek word, eu angelion. Eu means good. Angelion means news. May katunog ba yun? Angelion? Angel? Angel? Because notice, in the Bible, when people were visited by angels, when the good news was given to them, nabago ang buhay nila. Naiba ang buhay nila. Hindi siya good news pag hindi nabago ang buhay. And that is what the Word of God is for us. The Word of God converts us. It is good news. And during this time of pandemic, alam ko po, iba sa atin, tuwan-tuwa, nakakasimba kayo sa maraming simbahan, nakaka-attend kayo ng maraming recollections, maraming talks. At alam ko naman po, namimili tayo ng mga pare, namimili tayo ng mga bishop, ng mga, mga madre, mga speaker, at sabihin natin, ay, gusto ko to si Father, maraming joke. Ay, to si Father, magaling to. Talagang matalino, very concise, very may system, may outline. No? May mga acronym. Itong si Father na ito, may silang mag-homily, gusto ko to. Alam ko, namimili tayong lahat. Natutuwa tayo. But at the end of the day, the question is this. Were you changed by that preaching? Were you changed by that proclamation? Because if not, natawa ka lang, na-entertain ka lang, may natutunan ka nga, it made you feel good, that is not yet good news. Kaya minsan nakakatuwa, ang galing ni Father noon mag-talk. Ang galing ni Father nung binigay niyang recollection tungkol sa forgiveness. Magpapatawad ka na ba? Ay, ay hindi. Nakakatuwa lang yung talk niya. Hindi ho good news yun. Kasi hindi ka na bago pa rin. Ay, ang ganda ng talk ni Bishop tungkol sa ano, no? faithfulness. O magiging faithful ka na ba? Ay, hindi. Mahirap eh. Pero very interesting yung talk. That's not good news yet. Because real good news will change your life. And that is why as I end this reflection, I have another assignment for you. What is your favorite Bible verse? Sana naman ho, meron kayong Bible verse na alam kay isa. No? Post nyo mamaya in observance of National Bible Sunday. But then ask yourself, what does this Bible verse mean for me? Why did I choose this Bible verse? Eh, maganda, may, may rhyme. Ay, maganda pakinggan eh. Ah, it makes me feel good. Cute siya, yung Bible verse na to. Nakakaiyak siya. Nakakatuha siya. But if that Bible verse will not change your life, for example, ang pinili mo, God is love. Pero, wala namang love sa'yo. That verse is not good news for you. If you, for example, say, everything is grace, lagi nyo ko narinig, pero reklamo ka ng reklamo, hindi ka naman nagpapasalamat, that verse is nothing. It's not good news because it is not changing and shaping your life. The Word of God converts. As we continue with this Mass, dear sisters and brothers, let us pray for one another that we may have a deeper love for the Word of God. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us your Word. Teach us to have a devotion to your Word, especially in the Bible. 
Because your word calls. Your word converts. Your word is good news. Please all stand. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For as men in our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. After hearing the word of God, let us now offer to the Lord our words, our prayers, our hearts, trusting that they may be in accordance to his will and to his word. We shall say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those involved in preaching the good news, may they exercise their ministry with selflessness and integrity of life. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all Christian families, may their generous response to Jesus' invitation to a more radical discipleship make them heralds of good news in their own environments. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the individual believers to whom the Lord addresses the call to a special discipleship, may they respond generously like Simon, Andrew, James and John, so as to bring Christ's love and salvation to all. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the members of the various Christian denominations, may the love they share for the Bible enable them to overcome all divisions and rebuild the unity for which Jesus prayed. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us, as we celebrate National Bible Sunday, may we take it as a challenge to read the Word of God every day, listen to His message for us, and apply it in our lives. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to the pandemic, that God may grant health to the sick, His strength to those who care for them, and comfort to families. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the trust you show in associating us to your mission. Grant us the grace to be heralds of your good news in word and in deed in a world saddened by the bad news of sin and evil, you who live and reign for e forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you may love in us what you love in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Put your right hand on your chest as a sign of reverence. At every Mass, the Word of God is given to us. The Word made flesh, Jesus, is offered to us. Let us open our hearts to the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, St. Michael the Archangel, St. Padre Pio, St. John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now call on our loving Father. Our, our Father. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and now you're saying it to all of us, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, do not look on our sins. Pardon us, Lord, when we listen more to the words of men rather than to the word of God. Forgive us when we become stubborn and defiant, when we ignore your call, when we refuse to change. Lord, look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other Christ's peace. sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy sins of the world grant us peace. 
Behold Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please kneel and pray the Horatio Imperata against COVID-19. All together, God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Rock. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Please all stand. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. We praise and thank the Lord for our servants and staff here at Greenbelt Chapel for helping us make sure this chapel is a safe space as we conduct our services during this pandemic. And we thank you for coming over despite the risks and the difficulties the inconvenience, those who are out there, salamat po. And to those who join us online, thank you. And thank you also for supporting Greenbelt Chapel, for making Greenbelt Chapel your spiritual home. We had a very simple but meaningful and I believe grace-filled fiesta last Sunday in honor of the Santo Nino because of your support. And let us continue to pray for each other. And I pray that every time, especially you attend the Mass, physically, virtually, you may truly encounter good news. Words that will really change our lives, that will bring us closer to God. And pray for us, priests, that in the end, we become messengers of the good news. And may the good news be our strength, our hope, our healing as we journey through this pandemic because Jesus is our hope, our peace, and our strength. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And I invite you now to include in your intention people, who need God's healing, peace, people right now who 
who need to hear the Word of God, who are finding it difficult to change, to experience conversion. Let us pray for them. Let us share this blessing with them. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in His sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of His glory and teach you with the words of truth. May He instruct you in the good news of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go and love the Word of God. Thanks be to God. Our fear, our fear, our fear.